So my mom and my sisters and I love going to thrift stores. We are, <laughs> most of the stuff in our house is from thrift stores. Um, furniture, bookshelves, decorations, all these different things. We're not the type of people that just goes and buys things just to buy things. We go looking for like funky cool stuff that we could use. And it's, I don't know, a lot of people come to our house and they're like, God, your house is different. Or I love being at your place. It's so funky. You've been called hippies. I had one friend said, are you sure you're not Russian? Because every single one of our walls is like a different color. Or like every room, like our kitchen is, or our dining room is orange. Our living room is red. Our kitchen is green, you know. And we got like tons of funky little weird things everywhere. We're not the type of people that go and buy new things at the store for like super inflated prices that are um, always like modern looking or something. Do you know what I mean? We don't usually follow like house decorating trends, I guess you could say. But I've collected so much stuff over the years. Like my mom, even for like Christmas gifts and whatnot, she knows that I like knickknacks. So she'll buy me little things like, um, here's one thing. I think this was hers actually. And it's a cool little cast iron pot or cauldron. And the, the lid comes off. And then there's a little thing here. And I'm assuming it's like a cooking pot. For soup bowl because I've gone to some like Asian food places and that's how they'll serve us the food and whatnot. I'd like random stuff like that. Like this brass goblet. I've bought a lot of things for like my altar and whatnot as well. So I I've collected a bunch of these things. But now my room is like filled with bookshelves because <laughs> I finally packed my books and I like got a different desk and everything and I'm realizing that all the crap that I own fills up because my bedroom is the size of two bedrooms because it was an add-on to a regular size bedroom and I have a huge storage area in my bathroom filled with stuff. So my room didn't look too bad, but I've got boxes of crap. And I was like, why do I own all this stuff? And I'm looking at it and I was like, well, cause this is badass. This is badass. This is cool. I'm never going to find this in a store again. It's usually like unique finds that either I'm, I don't want to pay for again, like candlesticks. I started collecting candlesticks cause I always like, I like watching movies while they're like pagan movies or something, or they'll be like this evil. Usually it's like they're Satanist or something. Seeing where there's candlesticks everywhere on different level so when you burn the candles it's like this beautiful wall of like flames kind of and I also collected them for my altar and stuff and I never use them like this one this brass candle holder really pretty it has like a nice floral design and everything on it and uh still nice never used it tons of them I start I went through a bunch of boxes I went through like 20 boxes of stuff from things that I hadn't unpacked yet from when I was trying to move and I got like seven boxes of stuff out of it to sell so far, that's all my stuff. Um, a lot of the times I haven't gone through the boxes completely or the boxes will have something big in it. And that's why, you know, um, it, it's not like a box full of little things like the, the candle holders or stuff. Sometimes it's like paintings and whatnot or more books. Um, so I've been trying to unpack everything. But a lot, but now I had some people over to try and buy things from my house. Like I had some friends over and it was basically like a bedroom garage sale. And uh, they didn't take everything with them. So, and I keep posting like, come over to my house, but I don't want strangers here. So my friends, this isn't huge for my personal friends. So a lot of people are busy and don't want to come over to <laughs> they'll look through my bedroom for crap they want to buy. So I'm starting to put it on. It's not crap. I keep saying that, but I, I wouldn't buy it if it's crap. <laughs> um, I started putting on Mina's Apothecary for the most part, even though a lot of the stuff will work on the well and spindle, which is my pagan sort of related shop. Well, it's mostly pagan. I, I find like it's, it's funner to make a story and everything for them, make a lot of these things cursed. So I put this up, I can put this on the well and spindle and say it's a cauldron. But then I was talking to my friend and he's helped me with a lot of my ideas and stories. And I've been in a funk lately because I've been kind of depressed. Um, that doesn't have anything to do with it. <laughs> So I haven't been able to write any stories or anything for these items and haven't really been motivated to list them. So he's been making up stories like this is a, I don't know how to pronounce it in Japanese, but there's supposed to be, he was talking about Japanese vampires and they said they don't, they don't like in the Occident, the vampires will, the story said that the vampires eat the flesh as well. So we're saying that's a vampire cooking pot. So they'll cook your flesh in it. And this one I had a, he said it belonged to Elizabeth Bathory and she would put her, the blood that she would, um, from virgins into it and she would drink out of it. So now he says it's cursed to whoever drinks out of this. Anything that you put in it is going to taste like blood. Different things like that. Brass candlestick, murder weapon. Um, I had this cool mug. I, I love this thing. I don't really want to get rid of it, but I'm going to because I have so much stuff. Um, I was actually keeping some wheat out of it. Um, I wasn't planning wheat, like dried wheat as a decoration since I didn't want to drink out of it because I'm afraid I was going to chip it. I buy these things, I don't use them because I'm afraid I'm going to break them. So I need to get rid of them. Um, and he said that 
one of the Borgias poisoned a Burgermeister with it. He put cyanide in it or something. He said it smelled like almonds, though. I thought arsenic was the one that smelled like almonds, but whatever. So, have that on the shop right now. I'm just showing you a couple of the items I put up. And this, I bought, or I didn't buy this. It was at a tool swap, so I think I traded some tarot cards for it. And it was owned by, um, supposedly it was owned by Stephanie Gramasi or Stephanie Taylor, um, who's married to Raven Gramasi. And we put that as a love shrine. Tons of little stuff. We're not little. Tons of vintage stuff. I don't really want my stores to turn into like vintage stores because a lot of stuff's really old. Um, but uh, I think it's cool to just give them a different story and everything, and I hope that people will still see them because I'm still trying to sell them to people who want them because of their vintage like value and everything and want them because they're funky and old, but also trying to give them a weird, creepy story for my funkier friends, if that makes sense. Um, if they don't sell them, I can always move them to the wall and spindle and just give them a no story at all and just say, here's a brass goblet, put it on your altar, you know? Not as fun. My friend was saying that the Well and Spindle versus Mina's Apothecary, that the Well and Spindle is light and Mina's Apothecary is dark, so I have a balance with my stores. But yeah, so, but you're going to find more of these vintage items. I'm going to go through some of my stuff tonight and keep putting things up. I just haven't had the creativity, like nothing's been flowing through me to really make some jewelry or anything, or to work on more bottles, or and I ordered more oils to make perfumes, but now I have to sell a few things in order to be able to buy some, um, roll-on bottles to mix perfumes in. So buy some stuff so I can make new things instead of just selling old things. But I'm not just selling these to make money. I, I need to get rid of them because there's so many things. They need to move on to better homes because I don't want to keep them in boxes their entire life. Well, they don't have a life, but still, you get what I mean. And also because like I know some people can use them and it's not just like I don't want to just give them away to the thrift store because I paid good money for a lot of these things. I'm trying to basically sell them pretty cheap because one friend told me, sell that for $30. And I was like, no, eight maximum. <laughs> and I don't want to like rip people off or anything. I want to make sure that I'm getting back basically what I spent for them because I took really good care of them. Some of them I even fixed, cleaned, and did other things too. And also be able to keep continuing running my store and everything because I these are my jobs, basically. I have no other job right now. I'm looking, but it hasn't happened yet. So, yeah. Fun vintage items at Mina's Apothecary. Go check them out. At least read my stories or something. Um, or my friends. Half the stories are by my friend. Half of them are written by me. He likes to put more names in it than I do. And if I do use a name, I tend to use historical people. Um, like, I'll go and sit there for like an hour researching. I'm like, okay, I want to call these earrings a shootout. And I'll like sit there researching all these people who are famous for different shootouts and whatnot. And I'm like, oh my god, why didn't I just make up a name? <laughs> it's the history nerd in me that's like, no, you must get it right. Even though item wouldn't have been made at that time or anything but yeah so go check out my vintage items tell me what you think and um yeah let us know how you like the stories because i'm sure he'd like to hear um how others feel about his work and whatnot as well and uh thank you for watching